Okay, hello again everybody, it's only me, Wushu Richard of Richard Club, and welcome once again to another video. And this, this is another video for the people who are chair bound, okay, so it's chair bound martial arts, kung fu, okay, whatever, training, okay, for self defense. We're going to get into it now and look at some techniques, okay, so I want to say hello again to Josh, I have to, uh, that's um, Uncle Cal, okay, everybody please subscribe to Uncle Cal. Um, he inspired me to make this video for people like him and uh, people that are chair bound and want to, you know, learn some martial arts or train, you know, train. Um, I won't go too deep into this. I want to go more deeper in the future in videos about the breathing aspect of like certain breathing. Like when you're sitting there, that's also okay, such as when you're sitting there, relax. Don't be so straight back, but don't be so hunched over. And, um, just natural and relax your shoulders and just breathe with your hands and things like that. I want to explain, okay, in future, not this video, but future videos I want to explain, okay, to you. Things like this, like when you're breathing with your fingers, things like breathing in and just breathing back out. Breathing out like this or you can do different kinds of motions, you know, breathing into the lower body, then into the lungs or breathing out, making drawing circles in front of you, or like up. So these different kinds of positions you see, like placing your hands as you're breathing, breathing into the one, like, it's basically a lot of different breathing exercises. I'm not showing you in this video, I'm just saying that like, breathing, you know, in, yeah, I'm mean, controlling the breath into the lower body, raising your hand to the side and things like that. Breathing through your fingers or breathing it back to the centre. Moving your hands as though you're like swimming or putting your hands like in water, like all, imagining you're in water and feeling the energy from your lower body to your midsection, or feeling that core again, bringing the energy back to the core. Mind, all this kind of thing can be done. Reaching out, you know, and pushing out and bringing in like kind of like Tai Chi exercises, you know, I mean, things like that are very good to practice because, again, even just standing there, put your hands in a position like this, and just breathing, close your eyes if you wish to. Just breathe naturally, and just feel your centre and your core, you know. And feel that, really feel that. And try to like, you know, focus around you and, and things like, such as that. Think about the, the surroundings around you. Just bring the energy back to the silk, in this natural, relaxed state of sitting anyway. Now trying to get into a more relaxed state, but feeling power, not falling asleep, things like that, okay, feeling the energy even with your hands, they're just feeling, feel as though you're inside this ball almost of energy. And practicing certain kinds of flows of the hands, I'm going to explain that in future videos as we go along, okay? <coughs> if you'd like to know more, do let me know. Let's talk about it now then. Regardless of the amount of feeling you've got in your lower body, now I don't want to say regardless of this, regardless of that, and as though everything should be discarded, when there's actually relevance in focusing on things such as the amount of feeling you've got in your legs, or any movement or whatever, and the connection, as I've said before, with the actual legs, the affection of, the, of that, the actual how, the amount of feeling you've got, and, and movement, or if any, or discomfort, how that is affecting your waist, which is very important in martial arts, and your back and lower back, because all this is connected into one thing, into your arms. But let's look at the basic thing, okay? You are a lower when you're sitting, when you're seated, you're a lower usually, unless you're in a higher, a higher kind of an area or whatever. But if you usually you're seated, you're a lower level than the people who are standing. So if someone's going to attack you, as I said before. You, they're going to be leaning over to you, usually. If they're not, then they're still exposed <coughs> to their body. You can't reach up, let's say, so easily and strike them in the face, although you could maybe strike up to the chin, but you don't want to overreach out as such. If you go reaching out, which is very important, okay, if you go reaching out to attack somebody, it's the same as standing up. If I was to stand up and let's say reach out to grab an attacker, he can like, pull me off a of balance. I want to keep it small and subtle so that when somebody's coming to attack me, I can absorb their energy in 
block around that and fight around that, okay, and just let them put themselves off balance and exaggerate. And I can just put that power from what I've been bringing in and just blast out of the yin yang power, you see, get them into simple locks, blocks, and, and strikes that I can do with my body, okay, excuse me. Uh, so, okay, um, now, normal um, exercise is very important, a uh, usual, ex- um, regular, sorry, regular exercise is very important. I don't care if you are. Excuse me, that's the TV. Hold on one second, okay? I'm going to check the TV. Oh, no. It's okay, it's my wife with a hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, okay, yeah, um, yeah, uh, what, what was I saying to you? If you are, you know, re- uh, so you are, you need to do regular exercise, okay? You need, you, everybody needs to do uh, a great deal of regular exercise. It needs to be done, okay? Even if you are chair down, okay? Because you need that in martial arts. You just have to get that energy in your body. You need to loosen up, practice some wrist exercises, shoulders, okay? Your neck, everything, okay? All that breathing, you know. You can do any movement of your body, and even slight movements, it's all good, okay? For your body, upper body, whatever, okay? Um, the other things like that, stretches are. Okay, things like that, okay, stretch it out, so to make sure you've got the greatest level of flexibility you can possibly have, and you know I'm very flexible in my videos, you see that, but if you do do any other training, such as weight training and things like that, do do that, now obviously for someone who is chair down, you probably understand, um, more than me, you know, so you probably understand of course that, you know, you don't want to put too much pressure on your upper body. The same as stand up in martial arts. People always say that. you don't want to be slouching over, leaning over, or like lifting weights. And obviously, you put power pressure on your back. Relax your back. Let the power come from your arms if you are doing weights, even punches with weights for punching this side. Things like to strengthen your arms and things like that. I'm not the strongest guy. I'm just saying, you know, things like that. You know, but for the breathing. Or whatever, you know, things like that, you, you can um, do a great deal of good training to strengthen your body, but it's got to come from the core. Even with the mind and the, and the body connected, still your body, even from your lower body, if you do have um, legs with some feeling in them, be it on a, a mental level, a spiritual level, or a physical level, or to whatever extent of any, even if you don't have any feeling in it, it's got to be that that is your body and it's connected, I feel, and it's all connected, you've got to understand your lower heart and your heart itself and from the inner and to learn to feel all. It's like you're in a forest, as I've said before, and you're standing there feeling the energy. You're feeling, regardless of if it's real or not, but you are learning to feel the energy of all the trees around you. I'm standing, I'm sitting here now, and that camera is in front of me. I'm using that camera as a point on the centre here, and I'm working this circle around that. If that was a strike coming to me, I'm working that as a block piece. I'm, saying, I'm working all that around me. I'm not even connected with that, but I can feel as though there's a connection here with my hands and I'm in mean water. There's a door beside me there. I'm totally aware of that. I'm feeling, I know there's a wall behind me. I can like subtle there. It might, it might sound crazy, but I can like uh, focus on any part of this room there. I can stand here or just sit here like this, relax, and feel that wall over there. You've got to get that kind of mental training as though it's become a part of you. It's like, I, I, I don't know, I'm just saying, can you imagine if you had your arm chopped off, suddenly you would have no feeling in your arm, but it's like, you can, you can somewhat imagine what it would feel like, I guess, with the feeling of the arm, the mind still has it, so right now I can imagine myself having a, thir- a third arm or a fourth arm, and imagining those arms and the feeling in them slightly, although I can't feel it as such. You sort of say, I can sit here and I can kind of like, Feel someone standing there by that door. It might sound crazy. I'm just trying to say for the mind training to get a kind of focus. If you can do like magic, like mind thinking, you can do really amazing things on the physical. So if I'm standing here and um, someone's walking in, let's say, I could. You can tell your mind to connect with that floor as though this whole floor is part of your body. You say, well, if someone will connect it anyway, if someone touches that wall. Let's say someone touches the wall, that wall is part of my body, and I can feel, it's like that wall is feeling, I can feel it. It should be like that, the kind of training you can do. So what I'm saying is, is 
when you, let's go back to what I was saying, back to the truth again, yeah? If you're leaning off a balance, let's say, you're going to be easily thrown off a balance, right? So if you're sitting in a chair, you don't want to be leaning over anyway. You know, that's another reason, because if you're leaning over, not only you put too much pressure on your balance centre, things like that, it's like, it's all going to come from the centre, and you're going to keep it in anyway, so in the health training and the fighting. So if you're leaning over, or leaving up like that to punch someone in the head, or reaching out to get something, someone could easily pull you, maybe even pull you out of the chair, when you will be in a more vulnerable position. Okay, you know, so what I want to say, okay, is if you are sitting in a chair, keep it central. Now, if someone's head's above you, okay, can I put it that way? If someone's standing there, if they put themselves off a balance, it's an opportunity for you to attack. Now, uh, to, I'm sorry, only to, um, to uh, act on that. If they're leaning over, put to grab you, you can get them into much, the, the more off balance they are, the more opportunity there are to attack. And sometimes, when someone's committing themselves to an attack of some sort, they'll seem as weak, they may not even be rushing and putting so much power in, they might be, fair enough, uh, uh, and all that, but it's like, sometimes it's like, they're putting themselves open to attack immediately, because they're committing their arms or whatever to that. If someone's coming in for a kick too, if you're sitting there and someone's going to kick you, that's also a very um, dangerous thing, isn't it? But you've got to be able to subtly block and uh, very powerful blocks that can um, deal with the situation in terms of like, hurt them, if possible, in some way, and stop them, you know, stop that attack, the way I see it, okay? Uh, or really mess them up. If someone goes to kick you and you are able to block it, in such a way that you hurt their foot or twist it and they go flying, smash it through a table. They might even be, they might end up chair down tomorrow and they can't even do martial arts. Man, you know what I'm saying? And um, I'm just saying, you don't, I'm not saying you want to hurt somebody, you know, when they want to certain way, you know what I mean? Then. So, so what I'm trying to say is, okay, if someone's leaning over though, or leaving themselves open, if you're punching like that, you've got your gut open and you, if you're punching though, you've got all, all the bases again to keep it small, you see, in, in your training, I do my wing training right anyway, you know, so a lot of the time, you've got to understand all kinds of training, I mean, big and small. Now, if you're sitting there, you've got to feel that centre as though it's all together, and it's all to your favour, you know what I mean, it's all like you've got that root, and it's like you're sitting there, a subtle thing, he doesn't expect it, somebody standing beside you, back fist him in the nuts, you know what I mean, get him in that position, or elbow, or do something to distract him, you know what I mean? Go to reach for something that he didn't see. He come in, he goes to stop you. At that moment, you kick him in the leg. If you were to have feeling in your legs, I'm saying. You see what I'm saying, yeah? Or reach for something, you go to see that and you punch him in the, in the groin. Right? <laughs> when you punch, you've got a power too. Things like a karate or a lot of martial arts where you've got a habit of like pulling your elbow back when you punch. You know, like this. If the chair is restricting you, let's say, you can't pull it so far back, right? And that's okay, when you put it back, you get in, not only for the power, but it's like a certain twist. So, that's something to keep in mind though, that there are restrictions of things around you and things like that, okay? For the elbow, I would say. But for different kinds of punches, you've got your wing chun, you've got your boxing, you've got your karate, you've got different kinds of techniques, okay, you can do. Palm strikers, you know, chops and things like that, okay? Grabs, wrist locks, twists, all kinds of different techniques that can be done. Um, as I say, certain things like chopping and that, which would go up to the high areas usually, going to be hard to do if you're sitting, of course. If someone does come up from another angle to attack you, that can also be um, confusing, a hard thing to do. If they're not leaning over, let's say, to, you know, and if they're standing, maybe they actually sink low like that themselves. Someone could even be sitting down beside you, even. You've got to know how to deal with that. Someone grabs you, remember, it's the same as them grab, if you're grabbing them. You go to the flow, don't forget, and you're able to, um, sometimes you can really, it's a chance for you to really mess them up. I'm not saying, I'm not advising the most brutal techniques, but I'm just trying to say it's self defense, you know, whenever it goes. If someone's going to kill you, you really got to fight for the defense of your life. And I'm just trying to say, if, some, if someone's there, though, and they grab you, let's say, or somewhere on the side, or another chair, you know, there's a chance, their hand's busy, don't forget, so you've got a chance to do certain things, okay, I'll say. If someone's reaching over, let's say, you know, leaning over, let's say, you, you, you've got a chance to put more balance, 
Um, things such as utilising the wheelchair itself, as the wheels like over someone's foot, or like um, putting something through the wheel. I'm not saying lock yourself up, I'm just trying to say like uh, something that could, you know, like um, a broom handle or something that could, but that's just being funky, I'm not trying to mess around. Things such as the actual, um, the, 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 the rest, the arm rest too can come into play. If someone's going to grab that, great. You know, if someone grabs that, grab their hand. You know what I mean? Things such as that. Or, or if someone's going there, sometimes you might even be able to pull their the, the hand the loops and traps their arm underneath the whole thing anyway. You pull them in. Whatever's coming in, you just pull it in. It's like when someone comes to punch you, you stand up. I said before, you block two arms in or open their hands out. You don't let their head come and smash your head. It's just the same thing. You don't want to like, block that and let his head come in. Always maintain a good guard if you can too. If you can guard with your legs in some way, do that, as I say. Okay? But you want to go through some kind of um, real fighting hard techniques, I guess, which are really going to really stop the fight. I mean, it's most important, stop the attackers. Someone's coming from behind, or going to try to push, pull your chair, or attack you, or come from behind, it's even more uh, dangerous. So don't put yourself in a position where your back's open to attack, to an open window area, or door to. Uh, you know what I mean, yeah? Um, be aware of your surroundings and how to use that before they even come to you. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's like you'd be stand, a stand-up fighter. You'd want to make sure that you've got that covered so that you don't need to stand up, so that you can sit down and relax and watch TV. You know what I'm saying? So you'll be able to make sure you're just ready. It's like you'd rather be able to sit here, relax, and watch the TV, and there's a guard guarding your door there, standing there, who's going to fight attackers off, right? So you want to be able to make sure you've got an army of warriors that comes from your imagination, and that's your whole fort is so, your castle, you know, your fort is so filled with traps, and so, I mean, so, you know, covered, that, you know, nobody's going to be able to get in. It's that ninja mentality again before you even get to that combat stage. But what I'm trying to say is be in there, don't let them know you're going to fight, don't be like sitting there, come on then man, I'm going to fight at you, come on, I'm, I'm in my chair, I'm not afraid of you. Because that might do it straight away. You've got to be subtle, you've got to make it so that they don't know. But don't let them come from behind or surround you that way, try to you cover as you can. Whatever di- difficult situation you're in, make sure you are never afraid. If something doesn't work, you've always got to follow up and you never stop fighting until the end. Until you absolutely, um, until the danger is resolved, I'll put it that way. But do it safely and um, you know, maturely. Again, uh, be ready for anything uh, in terms of not only mind, but practicing all techniques in your whole body and your reaction to actually be able to fight. Okay, that's, that's very realistic and serious there. Using anything, it could be um, a cup of water, chuck it in the face. I'm just being realistic though, uh, you know. Uh, anything it could be got to be careful now. I'm not trying to say pick a knife up and stab somebody, gunshot, or whatever. You, you, know, you can help it, you know what I'm trying to say, yeah? Uh, I know people want to say gun self-defense. You know what I mean? No, I'm not trying to say um, you come there, you know what I mean, um, carrying knives and that, and you know, or like um, smash a glass or glass bottle and you use the glass, just keep away from me, keep them away. Be careful, it's like you don't really want to cut somebody, you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say, though? Sprays and things like that could be work, could work, you know what I mean? Plan an escape route or plan a way of escape, planning them, planning ahead for different things and what could be done in the same way you plan for any kind of safety or um, things early on in it, ahead for, you know, any, any, journey, any way, anything you'd be doing in life. But so a battle the same thing. A battle, a battle, well, I'll show you a battle, unbelievable. And it's like if you had like a broom handle or something like that, you know. Or some kind of thing, you know, some people are probably very creative, they probably like tape, I mean really strongly, they have to tape strongly too, but some people probably tape like a sharp knife, pointy thing, or like some kind of sharp thing on the end of a stick, or like a broom handle, or, you know what I mean, sharpen it, and I'll say that, you know, spike a double end maybe, or a rake or something, and you use that, to like ward off the opponent, uh, to keep away from it, but you've got to know how to use it, and, but you wouldn't be wanting to stab down someone's groin realistically, would you? Or someone's wanting you kill them and you go to prison anyway. But I'm just trying to say, you know, getting an idea, getting an idea. What to a uh, martial arts training, I'm saying. This goes again, like, onto the, you know, again, as you say, I'm happy that you like the, you know, the stuff, the big Josh. But this goes on to the, you know, everybody. 
like the, what do you call it, the um, improvised weapons training. I'm just trying to stay for the training. I was watching um, a few documentaries online, stuff about the white crane fist also, which you know is a star I practice my way, isn't it? But I watched um, another documentary I watched recently was about um, a guy there again, and he was talking about how to use the staff in Kung Fu. And he was talking about different techniques. He was saying you must know how to use it. He was a master, an old guy. He was a Chinese guy. He was saying how you should be able to use it at long range and short range, using it in a close range to cover yourself, and that, as I was saying before, as well as in a long range. You know, so you need to know how to do that. So covering yourself, you know, things like that. You can't be like saying, I'm going to swing this pole in a long way there, or keep him at bay in long range. And the guy comes in grabbing you, don't even know how to do it, you go with that momentum. You've got to know how to do certain things like that. You must say, well, if he grabs it this way, I'll go with a flow and I know all different kind of techniques. I don't need to let go of this good until I'm fair enough if you can. But sometimes you might not be able to. You might be able to just let, do you more good to like let go. As long as he doesn't hit you in the face and just punch him in the groin or get his arms. Because he's, he's, you know, giving himself up to that. Things like that. It's like when you get that advantage, what do you do? You've got to capitalise on it. Like someone reaches over to you, leaning to you, or you hit them in an open pot, or whatever, or they, or they put themselves off balance, or put themselves open to attack in any way. If that guy is leaning over and you pull him in, then what do you do next? He's not saying you're going to finish him and kill him, but I don't really mean that. You've got to um, do the next step. You can't just say, oh, just block him off balance and let him go, you know. Or just block him and punch him. You've got to make sure it's a real good hard strike that's really going to do some damage. Or at least the next one and the next one. You've got to win at some stage as quick as possible. And don't give up until it's done, until he's, the danger's gone. If you can get away, get away. That's the most important thing they say, run. You know, I've, I've ran in the past, I've had things. But it's like, I've been through it, like, you know, the guy's coming, you've got to throw him down, control. If you can get that in a restraint, if you've got a pair of handcuffs, cuff him down, you know what I mean, yeah? But a lot, you know, you've got to be realistic about it. Um, you've got to find what is best and what's right to do. So things again, such as like elbow strike for the side, you've got your sides, you've got your front. On the sides, back fist, gut, low. Like, Punch, it could be done, like different kinds of punches. Some people, they don't lean over, as I say. You put your elbows, okay, you can block with your elbows in to the sides, you block with your elbows too, okay. Block in swings, anybody who swings with grab you can block, but don't go too high, you, you know. You, you do it, of course, with cover there. You, the other ones people do, like, closer and all that, but I don't like that, as I say, you know. Covering there, don't open yourself up too much. Blocking and striking, as I say, different things like that, okay, as you know the basics, okay. All well, your basic um, like karate blocks, if you're familiar, familiar with that, will work. You, you might be able to bring your arm so back there, but you know the basics, you've seen your arm there, even like I would do like, my wing trying to lift it. The low kind of blocks, you know, high blocks like karate again, out, these kind of things, okay? Watching, if you, if you don't get the point, watch my videos again, as I say, this kind of blocking motion here, okay? Watch that again, these kind of motions here, okay? This kind of motion, as I say, I'm blocking in. Doubles, of course, crossing out, opening like this, double there, pushes, okay, palming down and pushing there. Don't let someone's arm go and grab your groin, of course, parry to the side if you can. Basic parry blocks, okay, coming out, like wing chun, like that again, coming in. You've got this kind of block here, like wing chun again, this kind of thing I've shown before, okay. Um, like things like that, I can say with one low. There, just opening up here, or just covering here, here, okay. Go on the side, just covering here even, okay. You crane and things like that, I've shown you before, okay. Down, okay, things like that, okay. So there's a lot of different things you can do, working with different techniques, using your chopping up motions to block and things like that. Cutting that down so the wrist was coming to attack, okay. Back fist strikes again, kind of forward, rolling over with that back fist, okay, the lower ones too, coming here. Back hand always up as a guard. Covering two hands to the side this way. So if there's one hand or two, you can cover to the side, bring him down. Okay, or cover up and come in. So so you parry and strikes, okay. Parry blocking strike. Covering down, looping over there. Bam, straight out. Back fist, the things like that. Pulling him in as he's coming down to grab you, pull that down, don't let his head hit you, just smash elbow across the head, throw back there, or throw him back that way, again, okay, straight into the rib cage, punching the elbow, whatever it might be, 
I've got so many different techniques, there's a lot I know, I'm trying to say to you, elbows coming in or out, so from different angles, up can be done, low to a groin area, someone standing here, don't put your arm out in a certain angle so that they can grab your arm and break it against the chill and lock it, I'm just trying to say, or trap it against something, don't let someone restrain your arms, you know, things like that, be tight if you can too, and snap those punches out really quick and fast, be high and low, when you're coming out of monkey almost in here, things like that, see? Got a thing like monkeys, isn't there? <laughs> you know? And um, all kinds of um, techniques you can do, as I say. Things such as being funky and thinking about, what am I going to do? Crane, you know, strike or like a um, leopard fist. It can be done, but you need to train the, the, you know what I mean? You don't need to be too messing around. Just take your basics, your palm. You're grabbing, train your wrists and your fingers every day with different motions and things like that, you know, rotation, things like that, your tiger, animal techniques and things, you know, palming out, palms out, things like that, utilising that motion of the, you know, different kind of palm strikes and this, circling, double there, double there, grab, palm, you know, grab, palm, palm, block, and palm here, or grab that, palm up there. Um, there are different kind of motions you can do, see? But don't you know, hunch over too much of it. You just be stiff, relax your shoulders. Don't be leaning over too like that. You might even pull you down, knee you in the foot, your effing head. You know, pull you down here, grab your head, smash your head, kick you, be finished. You want to kick your head, kick down, you know, tip your chair over or something. Don't even let that happen, you know what I mean? If you can. And so I said, well, whatever happens, fight. I don't care if you do end up on the floor. Fight till the end, okay? You want to fall down. You know, if you were, like, if you was something like a knife or something, you were just trying to say for your mind, so you could quickly chuck out a cross or some marble or something, trying to say something into his leg and smash it into his shin. And before he comes to kick you, he might fall down in such agony. You know, I'm trying to say you have to be ready for that. You know what I mean? Pull something out in front of you, a wheel table or something could be. Don't pull a, pull, move a table and a bottle falls down <laughs> on, your, on your own head because you will be out for the night, bruh. What did I say, you know? Yeah? Uh, using mind games and things too before it even comes to whatever, you know? Electric cables with water. I'm just joking, okay? Don't, don't uh, do, do the electroconductive shit, yeah? Out in the storms and stuff. Come on! Yeah, in the storm, man. That's like, I'm holding a plug. Come on! Oh shit! <laughs> it's an extra chair! Just joking, don't do that. Don't fry yourself, man. At least fry him. If he looks like Freddy Krueger, you know, don't fall asleep. Okay? Yeah, just joking, okay? Uh, 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 that. You know what I mean, man? So, use all kind of um, ideas and games and so things like flashlight and things to distract people and things like that, you know, and uh, other kinds of. Um, traps and tricks, you know. When you punch again, you might not necessarily need to come all the way back, you might just twist it from here, like my one of my good teachers used to do. And in boxing too, you'll find that, but my father and Kung Fu master used to just like do it from this kind of level anyway, so you're snapping that, that motion. You know, excuse me, snap, making, a, making it hollow slightly there. When you, when you make impact, you tense it at that moment, relax your shoulders and just from the breathing, see, and you just form, see, this comes back to here, and this rolls over. And you just like punch the grid, practice those every day, practice punches over and over again. Two, three, four, five. You know, drill it as though they do in a martial arts school. I'm not just saying play around doing a punch or whatever. Practice things like punching a wall or a bag, um, lightly being careful, not too light, but not so heavily and smashing your fists into walls, but for conditioning, or a tree breathing out in nature, if you're out in nature, in a tree, don't let anybody laugh at you, you know, but it. But do it by yourself, you know, train, a makiwara, or whatever it might be. Perhaps you do tiny chops, or whatever it might be. Cutting over there for cutting block, whatever comes over. Your hand, catching, palms rolling over. Back fist, whatever coming over, or to the side. As I say, things like that. Chopping motions, palms, so things like that. Blocking out wing chun again. As I say, working that punch, strike, actually striking something too, you know. Okay. Low, middle, high. You can still do that as well, like the karate or whatever. Okay. And then, so if you're doing it, you're rolling out with that outer block as you're punching there. Rolling out and also going down as a block, see, as you're doing that. 
say, so she did it, boom, 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 crossing out to all this kind of stuff can be done. So this is training, so you can do, so blocking here, blocking with your elbows and your whole forearm, it's like your, and your wrist, it's like your, and your hands are free, see, to attack her. But you're blocking down with your hands here, see, and you can still pull, but don't lean over. Things like that, okay? Crossing the two arms up if you can, the head comes sliding. His head does come in, great, straight away, you've got chops and snaps of the ears, things like that you can do. Chain punch can be done from that position. Sink it, feel the centre, no matter what, okay, even if you're seated. Like when you try and touch it, when you're training at home. Like crane or anything, do these kind of wrist movements. Don't just watch my video and think I'm messing around, do it, you know. Listen to some music where we're just relaxed it. See, on the rear. Yeah, slowly. See what happens? Alright, bring in here, see all that. Bam! So it's kind of motion here, see, wherever he's coming in. You can really get that power, see? Boom! When you're coming in, okay? Smack with the back hand, chopping like where he comes leaning in, you have to grab your shoulder, you have to grab your body, your wrist will be letting go past, twist him off the balance, slap that head, you go spying down, you might just get him in a choke there, neck lock, whatever it might be. Don't break his neck. Uh, <laughs> what kind of thing try to say now? Yeah? Or strike, man. You know what I'm trying to say? Get him restrained. You can control that arm good. If he grabs you, point a finger, you can crack that. You know, grab the hand. Two good things that I'm just trying to say for the ID, you know. Twisting the wrist. Don't go against the force. Go with the flow. Okay, like uh, Aikido and Hakido, same thing. When someone's going to attack, you push it. If they're leaning like this, twist that in that way and the elbow's going up, sink that up. If it's going to go down, go down. With that, okay, don't go against the force, like his hands more this way, don't go trying to twist it that way. If his hands like this, grabbing you, then you can easily twist them more this way. So go with that flow, feel the connection. If this is stiff here, you can more sense it that way. If this is relaxed, you can see it's more easy to twist that way. The elbow, see, think about the elbow up, you can twist it that way, see. So whatever's coming in, let it go. But don't grab his wrist and the elbow smacks you, or try to grab, and he's pulling it back. It's coming in, you've got to make sure you just cover most importantly, strike whatever comes, block it over the elbow, chop it, make strong fists when you strike, punch against that, don't end up hurting your own fingers, you know, make sure it's solid, don't end up hitting so weak that you don't crack your own wrist or finger, make sure it's solid and straight, you punch, punch against his wrists, hand whatever comes, he grabs to grab you, twist, crack, punch in, slack at his head falls down, maybe you can get a good elbow, smack across the head. I'm just giving you the idea of what it is, you know. Maybe you can't even use your legs uh, so badly in moving and start striking, but you might fall down and smash his head on your knee, if that's possible, you know. I'm just trying to say, for the idea of the self-defense, of putting your legs or your chair in a position so also that he deliberately trips over that, or like between a coffee table or something there, that you use that as though that table or stool was actually your leg for a sweep. So you can still utilise techniques, even though you're not even utilising your body. You can utilise the near and far and the whole thing with your imagination. You see, there's so much to it. I'm not going to knock around and say, put firecrackers on your car and rocket boost into the, into the sunset. I'm not going to say, um, you know, make a wire or like a, a rope covered in petrol and fire and just tie it to the back of your car, go down a ramp and trip him down and trip ten people over. You know, and, well, <laughs> spike, we call it a trip thing for like a... For, uh, we call it, um, for car chases and you know, <laughs> that one. I'm just trying to stay realistic. One more tip in this video, okay? Sometimes the wall, don't leave your back open and just face the wall there. Make sure the back the wall behind you for safety, okay? The wall behind you. You know where the doors are and that. Don't leave your back open to open door or staircase if you can push it down, whatever, up and up and down. Um, and again, sideway, if you're, if you're sideway at least, okay, if there's a wall here, and again, be aware of it being behind you too on the side. What's next to you? What can be used? And that, and not only that, okay, curtains or anything, rubbish bin. You're sitting there, someone coming over, if someone is going to grab you, sometimes you can grab, when they grab you, block that aside, smash the head through the window. <laughs> I'm, just, no, I'm just saying, you know, you can literally sometimes get a position where you are able to like, slam them or utilise that wall, I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? To lock somebody out against the wall, they're going to go across you or whatever, trapped off against the wall, use the wall to grab that arm and slam it so they fall into the wall, even from, even from other positions, such as where the wall is here, okay, 
but there's a space between you and the wall, still a slight space, but the wall is near enough to be utilised, or you put yourself in that position, though, because sometimes the wall doesn't put itself in a position for you. You put yourself in a position for the wall to work for you. So, you know, uh, anyway. so there's a space between you and the wall. Someone comes to attack you, you'd be standing here, you could be standing from beside me here or behind, but on the side here, I might be able to like, utilise that. Watch me carefully if you can. Someone standing here, his right arm is facing me, or he's, you know, I'm able to trap that arm up, grab that arm, use my shoulder or my other arm here, one on his wrist, one on his elbow, one on his shoulder, slam it up into the wall and wheel my chair across the leg, even trap his legs, trap his legs between my, the, the chair, the wheel, and my whole lower body with my arm here. The same way, if I was standing up, I'd be like this, see, the guy's coming in, I'll step on my foot, you see, usually myself, I'm trapping up these arm, and my legs locked against his, and stepping on his foot, my knee against his, bam, see, so I'm doing the same thing with the chair. Remember, to get a good control, you need to go with the flow, and it's hard to get a grab sometimes, but you've got to go with the flow, and you've also got to be able to hurt and control the thing, and don't try to commit yourself to one technique making it absolutely work. Most importantly, okay, you must remember to do the technique properly. So someone's standing there, okay, block, cracking the ribcage of an elbow, slamming back back fist if you need to, bam, and then chuck in, watch his momentum, okay? And don't be fighting that guy, just pounding away, bam, bam, and if he's actually, make sure it's okay, he's done, make sure, you know, that other people are not coming from around here, going to beat you and kill you with whatever, more danger. Make sure you can get away. If there's a doorway there or a lift, of an open door, strike him, knock him so that he can't let you quickly wheel away, go into that lift, press the button, and go down in the lift before they can come get you. You know what I'm trying to say, yeah? Or leave some kind of trap there, chuck some things there in the way if you can, or go over and make sure every door is locked and things quickly too. Make sure this guy is unable, rendered, unable to attack you, but don't put your back open to any dangers. You know, focus on the whole picture. But don't focus on the whole picture so much that every small point becomes a dangerous thing to you and you're unable to control the whole situation. Okay? Train on stay safe. And keep yourself always moved. You need to move to another situ another position, another area, another place in the in the place or position. More more suitable for you. Make sure you do that. Move efficiently and effectively to military old school style training in. But also make sure you if you don't need to move, don't be hesitating, don't be um, rushing and uh, too Jumpy, make sure you stick in position. Not just sit around and wait or just daydream, but just be sit in the right position. Make sure you don't need to move. You know, make sure you're able to fight from any, or be ready so that if you're any position you're in, that you're able to fight and you've got advantage. That's very important, okay? Okay, so, so, so again, it goes to the whole point again, which is being seated and being able to fight. Train on, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.